Welcome aboard, trainers. I'm Professor Bothy, and today we're meeting alien variants. Crazy. Our senses are tingling. Let's start tracking coordinates, Toasty. As you might recall, we've been able to meet more and more incredible alien Pokémon that come to us from a galaxy far, far away. Toasty has since been working hard at trying to further break the secrets of the Matrix. <laughs> Deep within the Omnidex coding, Toasty was able to revert into the true nature of the device that started it all. Through extensive testing, we've been able to unlock even more features of both Toasty as a Rotom, as well as an extension of the Omnidex. Going forward, we'll call this form Watch Rotom. For starters, Toasty now features the Stellar type, and thus should be able to more easily identify a wider array of genetic makeup of all future UBs moving forward. This should give us a better read at how to find, specify weaknesses, and capture rogue UBs from their original dimension here on our plane better than ever. Thanks to this new form change, I'm able to wear Toasty on my wrist and am able to get real-time updates via a HUD thanks to some new augmented reality features. With Watch Rotom and a better grasp at UBs thanks to an unlocked library of alien Pokemon DNA, we'll be able to get real-time updates. And we just got our first one. I'm currently live at Chardstone Cave in Unova, where a giant UB has recently made landfall. Its footsteps heavy. We've noticed several of the rock-type Pokémon in this space gravitating towards the alien life form. All that we have to really surmise its genetic makeup are shards of crystal that seem to splinter off of its massive frame. Running it by toasting, it seems to be a variant of a diamond-like substance from wherever this UB hails from. Let's continue onward and find this diamond in the rough. Trainers, meet this incredibly decadent alien Pokémon. UB Crystalline is very clearly an alien variant of our real-world Garganical. What an incredible discovery this is, as the implications of convergent regional mutations reaching beyond time and space is simply mind-boggling. With massive arms and a head encompassed of crystallized diamonds in a raw yet semi-defined form, this creature is a beauty to behold. In battle, although it is quite strong, it's seemingly delicate with bits of its crystalline formations breaking off with every punch and step. However, it has been noted that the creature is able to regenerate those bits at a rapid pace when it enters a state of rest. Its temperament is quite peaceful, and seems to enjoy the attention we give it because of its beauty. Although it doesn't prefer to battle, it seems to enjoy combat and can use its crystal in more unique ways, and not just physically. When the new wormhole opened, we were confused. Clearly, the Pokemon seemed to be some sort of Pikachu? I mean, Pikachu is found on nearly every region on our planet, so would it be so crazy to imagine that some sort of related variant could be found out in the world beyond ours? Tosi has found the rogue UB in Galar, where reports are saying that Cramorant have been engaged in tumultuous battles with the creature. Let's get over there and get to the bottom of things ASAP, before a Cramorant gets hurt chucking up a storm against this strange foe. I mean, this cutie pie is just the definition of a little goober. However, looks can also be deceiving. You can imagine that the Cramorants out in Bridgefield and Galar had quite the surprise when the Pikachu it was trying to gorge on would slip right out. As if its gelatinous body wasn't already a great defense. In our current battle and research trials, we found that UB Goobers got a smorgasbord of skills. This creature's mouth houses three goo-like tongues, of which it can ensnare its unsuspecting prey at quite some range. It seems to have quite a picky palate, but maybe that's because earth food might not be its jam. Speaking of jam, it's able to spit up jelly-like substances, much to the texture of its own body, that we are currently studying. Is it a defense mechanism or another form of attack? We'll let you know after some more research, so stay tuned. Seems like things are heating up, Trainer. Several UBs have broken through this time, with all of them having crossed over and according to our calculations, 
seem to be siphoning energy from volcanoes and then resting dormant. Much like UB Crystalline, it seems these Pokemon gain power from their surroundings, but the dangerous intent that this UB carries makes it more of a threat to the wildlife around in the area. Whatever this Pokemon is, it's registering at the very least a level of pseudo-legendary strength. Let's not get too heated and move with caution. I've seen this face before. Yubi Ignition looks to be an alien variant of our world's counterpart of pseudo -Udo. This time, it seems like it's really leaning into that rock typing and has turned itself into a volcano. Yubi Ignition seems to absorb rocks through its fingertips, melting them by physical touch and letting the minerals and elements seep deep into its own foundation. Once it's digested enough resources, it lies dormant and processes those elements throughout its body to stoke its internal temperature. It also seems that the magma that runs across its body is held intact by slow, ever-shifting plates of armor that get fortified by the rocks it absorbs. As far as its battle capabilities, it is an incredibly formidable foe that uses both rock and magma as ammunition. It fires projectiles from its fingertips that hit like a molten cannonball. If it wasn't made clear by its expression, these guys are quite dangerous and must not be taken lightly. The events of Area Zero keep me up every now and then, trainer. I think about the mysteries of time and space. These UBs, why and how they show up, make me wonder not only of our timeline, but of the past and present of realities far from our own. Karidon and Maridon, representing the past and the future, were anomalies in their own right, much like the case for this final mission for today's episode. According to Toasty in his watch form, this new UB has an energy source reminiscent of the Paldean legendary Pokemon, and as you would guess it, has a genetic base reading that builds entirely off of Cyclozar. How far we've come from the penny farthing, huh? UB Speedster takes the cycle and moves in line to... Inline skating. It seems that in a future, be it our own or an alternate timeline, Cyclozar would eventually upgrade into the powerful Miraidon. In another dimension, it seems Cyclozar makes that equivalent jump forward in a more organic way. The similarities between the Iron Serpent and UB Speedster are more than just visual. The two seem to also really build off of the electric type. The dewlap for this Pokemon exists not only on its throat, but get this can be found underneath their feet. It seems that the Pokemon puffs up its chest to build friction when running on all fours, and once it's generated enough electricity, the dewlaps of its feet expand into a spherical shape that features a slick middle section that lets it skate across magnetic fields. Can you imagine what the world it calls home might look like, and how it traverses there? What a sight it must be. On Professor's orders, Toasty here to assign the question of the day. Who of the Ben 10 villains do you want to see become a Pokemon? Describe them in full for extra credit. Be sure to comment your reply below by the end of the day. Rotom. <laughs> Watch Rotom is a wearable Pokemon that has been imbued with interstellar properties that can override nearly all forms of earthly tech at extended range. This Pokemon is able to augment reality by bringing binary code into the real world through its ghostly powers. Watch Rotom is able to speak UB languages already registered in the Omnitex, bridging the cultural gap between multiple dimensions in an instant. Terrariarm are so heavy that they seldom move for weeks at a time. This allows their crystal to grow and charge up their latent psychic power. Flora and other Pokemon make their home on Terrariarm when it lay dormant, and in its slumber, uses telekinetic power to ward off any danger by manipulating crystals on and around it to create a fortress of solitude. Up to have superior taste buds that make them sensitive to anything they put in their mouth. They curiously try anything that looks edible, or not, and are able to transform the swallowed substances into weapons in the form of electric jelly. These sticky blobs detonate with a paralyzing pulse when the creature burps on command. Pseudo Shudo! Pseudo Shudo is always ready for a fight as they are seemingly always looking for a reason to launch its dangerous magma blast. These Pokemon regulate its internal temperature by blazing out excess heat from the horns which act as an exhaust. When the flames turn to smoke, it signals the Pokemon is running low on its rocky resources and will act even more erratic until it refuels. Accelerate! Meow! Inline Pokemon! 
Accelerev uses kinetic energy to build up electric charge as seen by the inflation of the dewlap on their chest. Once in motion, it becomes quite difficult for this Pokemon to stop gathering speed, so it's learned to be quite dexterous and graceful with the way it skates, launching itself into prey at full force to end its momentum. Registration complete! Thanks for watching today's episode, trainers! I want to give a shout out to our growing community who helped in so many ways for today's art over at my streams. Don't hesitate to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can join us and get sneak peeks at new content in development. I also want to take this time out to show some massive love to my patrons. Thank you so, so much for your support. I've been Professor Bowie, aka Mr. Bonnie John. And I've been Until next time.